for the best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, we are pleased to have the owner of that establishment here in this studio, ready, willing, and certainly more than able to take any questions that you might send our way by telephone about the price of a car or a truck or an SUV that you're thinking of buying or selling or trading in. You do that by dialing us at 478-3116, and then you will be connected as if by magic to Ivan Streckel. Good morning, sir. Hey, Don. Thanks for the introduction. Once again, we're doing a double format here, which means that we are on the radio live at 1370 Talk Radio. That's an AM station. I think it's the oldest station in Pensacola, 1370. And we're also videotaping this for our uh, satellite and cable subscribers out there. So if you're watching this on TV, uh, this is not a live show on TV, so don't bother calling in. There is a phone number uh, on the bottom of your screen if you're watching this on TV there that you can call the dealership. And the reason you might want to call, this show is about values. That's the number one thing that we provide for the people in the Pensacola or surrounding area is what their car might be worth uh, if they decided to sell it themselves or if they decided to uh, sell it to us, for example, at Frontier Motors, or maybe just get an idea of what the trade-in value would be if they uh, decided that they're going to buy a brand spanking new car. So there's a lot of things that we can help you with, and it gets a little bit confusing when we talk about prices, and I'll give you the prime example. On Saturday, I had a young lady that bought a car from us. Unfortunately, had a happy ending. She did buy a car from us, and she was looking at a 2006 Zephyr. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's a Lincoln. Uh, now they, Then they uh, it used to be a Lincoln LS. Now that it's a Zephyr. Now they, it's MK, uh, MKZ is what they call it now. Pretty neat little car. Um, leather interior, sunroof, alloy wheels, uh, power, dual power seats. Very nice vehicle. I booked the vehicle out through the NEDA guidebook, folks. And for those of you that are watching the show, this is what the NEDA guidebook looks like. It's a, yellow, a little yellow book. And uh, we get these uh, uh, by subscription. And you cannot buy these. Uh, at the public library, even though they do have an NED version on the internet and at the public library, the ones we use are a little bit different. Now, she came in on this uh, Lincoln Zephyr, she came in with a Kelly Blue Book. Now, I don't make fun of the Kelly Blue Book, um, but I, we just don't use them here. And then she says, of course, well, why don't you use it? it? You don't use it because it's lower? I said, no, we don't use it because none of the banks are credit unions. And she was, by the way, financing the car. So the first thing I told her to do, because she came in with this uh, Lincoln Zephyr uh, pricing guide from Kelly Blue Book, and it said that a fair purchase price through a dealership on this car is $95.90. NADA retail was thirteen four. Now, folks, we're not talking about a couple hundred dollars. We're talking about a difference of about almost $4,000, the difference in the book between the Kelly Blue Book and the NEDA. Now, I guess from a perspective of your, if you're going to be selling me your car, I'd love you to use a Kelly Blue Book because maybe I can get it $3,000 cheaper. But fair being fair, I feel that if I buy the cars using the NEDA, I should also sell them using the NEDA. And uh, what I asked her to do, I think one of her banks was Penn Air Credit Union. I said, call them up and book the car out. Well, what happens when I call them up and book the car out, it comes to 13 4 and that's why we use the NED guidebooks. And folks, this is very important if you're going to be pricing your car yourself on the Internet. You want to call Frontier Motors for a second opinion to see if they're pricing the car too high or too low. If you're using the Kelly Blue Book to price your car, you're pricing it way too low, at least in this case. Now, it's not always the case that the Kelly Blue Book is that much of a difference. I did one about two weeks ago where a customer came in, so just to appease them, I, I, did, I went ahead and did the Kelly Blue Book, even though we don't use it in our area. And the difference on that car was $600. And it was six hundred dollars difference in Kelly Blue Book, not third, uh, not forty five hundred dollars difference. So quite a bit of a swing. We also at Frontier Motors use, uh, like every other car dealership, we use the Black Wholesale Guidebook. The wholesale guidebooks are very important because they tell me what's going on at the auction. Sometimes these books, like these truck books, are printed every two weeks. So what I also do, uh, the next step that I take is I go into the internet and I find out exactly what's happening in the marketplace. And the way that I do this, I I pull up the Mannheim Market Report. And Mannheim is the largest auction chain in the world. We're lucky enough to have uh, a Mannheim, a relatively new ha Mannheim right here in Pensacola. It used to be on Burgess Road, and so now it's over on W Street right here. It's, a, it's one, of the, one of their smaller auctions. They run their cars on Tuesday. They run anywhere from 400 to 700 cars on a Tuesday. We also have the second largest 
auction within driving distance, which is in, in Orlando, second largest auction that I know of in the world, other than Mannheim, Pennsylvania, which is the original Mannheim. Um, but in uh, Orlando here, uh, last uh, uh, week when I uh, had my buyer down there, they had 4,500 cards they were running on Tuesday. So we've got the Tuesday auction here going on in Pensacola, the Tuesday auction in uh, uh, in Orlando, the Tuesday auction in Atlanta, and then there's another smaller auction that we also attend, uh, AAA American auction. If you haven't been at the fairgrounds, there's an auction uh, out by the uh, behind the fairgrounds um, that runs also on Tuesday. So we've got four to five auctions going on every Tuesday. The ability that Frontier Motors has with these auctions is to get right into the reports and find out what a particular car is selling for. And we'll use the Zephyr as an example. If the Zephyr is selling on a wholesale basis for eleven five to twelve thousand dollars at the auction, well then I can take this Kelly Blue Book that says they I should be able to sell this car and still make a profit, I'm assuming they think, at ninety five hundred dollars, which is absolutely ridiculous. So I double check that though, just to make sure that the books are correct. And sometimes the books are all the same. And sometimes there's a huge swing. I saw this with a Corvette the other day that I was appraising where the black wholesale guidebook was really, really high, but the NEDA book didn't like it at all. And this is the bank that's kind of, this is the book that's kind of important because that's the book that the credit union and the bank is going to use to value the car as far as how much you should be financing on that car. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what the car is worth. That's what they're going to use to establish a financing amount. So what you want to do to find out what the car is really worth is called Frontier Motors uh, for a real value. And when I say real value, it's a, going to be a cost value plus a profit. So that if you've got a, uh, and I'll use a, let's use a Ford Focus as an example. It's a 2010 Ford Focus with 28,000 miles on it. And the question that you might have is, what should my car be worth if I sold it myself? Well, if the NADA book says it's worth $12,000 and the auction says it's going for $8,000, I would say if you're going to sell it yourself, you don't want to price it all the way to retail, but don't price it at wholesale. So I would say somewhere around the 10 to 10, five range is what that car should be priced for. So if any of the other books tell you it's higher than that, I would say to restructure, because if I can buy the car at $8,000 at the auction, I could bring it back here and sell it for 10 to 10, five and make a pretty decent profit. So I am the competition when it comes to selling a car. And I will give you this advice at no charge at Frontier Motors every day a week, except for Sunday when we're closed. And on Saturday, we had a lot of people in here. We sold a bunch of cars on Saturday, but we had a lot of customers that have heard the show before. We do the show on Friday, and we do the show on Monday, and uh, and uh, that have heard us. And they said, I'm just here from, for some free advice. Two uh, customers on Saturday were in for what we call a diminished value. And what that is is that that's a letter that we print off on our letterhead that states that your car is now worth less money because it's been in a major accident, especially if it's not your fault. Actually, only when it's not your fault. Now, the value of the car gets affected whether it's your fault or not, because now it's been a major accident. But as far as you uh, getting any money or a subsidy from the insurance company would be only if you were not at fault. And you can basically, what I, I hate to use the word sue, but you can ask the insurance company for some extra money because now your car is not worth as much. And we had a, a customer uh, about a week ago that was in with his Honda Accord, and it was a $20,000 car, and he had $14,000 worth of, an, uh, of of repairs on that car. They didn't total the car. They put it back together, put all the parts on, it looked really good. But I told them that the diminished value on that car was going to be like around $3,000. And I put that in writing and signed it. Now, the reason I did that is because I'm trying to help the customer maybe get a little money back because if he decides to trade that car in you know, in a short period of time, um, it's going to be worth less to me because I'm going to disclose the fact it's been a major accident. And folks, if you uh, have ever been gone to a car dealership and you look at cars, and you see the history report, whether it be a Carfax or auto check, and you see that uh, the airbags were deployed, <clears throat> the vehicle had to be towed, major da damage reported, what is your attitude about buying that car? It's pretty much in the toilet. Um, th the only way that I can convince somebody to buy that car, <clears throat> if I knew the background, if I knew what happened to that car, if I knew where it was fixed, and if I knew that they did it right, and if I could sell it at a bargain. There's a buyer for every car. Uh, there's even a lane down in Orlando that's a Lemon Law buyback lane. There's dealers in that Lemon Law buyback uh, lane buying those cars, but they're buying them so cheap because they have to disclose it to the next owner. These days with auto checks, history reports, uh, and uh, car faxes, it's very difficult to pass something by a customer these days. So what we do at Frontier Motors, we play it all above board. We do the auto check and the car fax. We unlock every one of our 360 cars every morning and put those uh, reports in the glove box of the car. So you really don't have to ask our salespeople for the Carfax. They're already in the car. 
And the other thing you can do is if you need a car fax on a car that maybe you're selling so you can show the next owner if it's got a clean history report or maybe it's one that you're buying on one of the websites, just call Frontier Motors with the ID number and I can help you with two ways. I can help you by doing that history report for you and I also can help you uh, by telling you what that car should sell for on the open market. This only takes me a couple of minutes and the, and the reason I do that is because maybe whoever you're buying it from is pricing the vehicle higher than they should. Maybe they use the Kelly Blue Book. Maybe they use the, the Edmonds. I'm really, I'm really not sure. But one of the things that is going to be very important to you, I would think, is to get a second opinion from Frontier Motors uh, to, to find out what that person should be selling that car for. And let's say they're asking for that Ford Focus. They're asking $12,000, which would be retail. And I'm telling you, I can sell you a car like that for ten to ten five. You can use that information to help yourself negotiate a better deal if you're buying that car from a private individual by telling them that you've been at Frontier Motors and Frontier Motors, I might even have that car in stock, by the way, with 360 cars, you never know, I might have the twin sitting there. But if I don't, I can still look it up for you and if the person you're buying or the dealership you're buying the car from won't come down to the $10,000 that I told you to pay, then I kick in the gear and I go buy that car for you. Um, with having almost 20,000 cars available at the auctions, um, not to mention even Auto Trader or Cars.com or Craigslist or eBay. I'm just talking about just what's available with Frontier Motors at the auctions. What I can do is buy the car for a good uh, wholesale price, mark it up, pay the shipping, and still be able to deliver it to you for $10,000. Uh, and like I said, you can use that information to help yourself get a good deal on the car. The other thing we can help you with, folks, if you're going to buy a brand new car, which obviously we're going to try to talk you out of, but if you are going to buy a brand new car, we have the new car cost guides. If you read Consumers Reports, Matter of fact, I have a consumer's report right here. The back of consumer's report always has an ad in it, every single one, and it says find out how much to pay for that new car, and you can buy an invoice for consumer's reports for $14, and each additional invoice for $12. Let's say you're looking at 10 different cars, you're not sure what you want. That's going to cost you about $140 bucks or $120 plus tax. At Frontier Motors, because I've got the new car cost guides um, that I subscribe to, I can tell you, and I'm just going to open up to the first page, at a 2015 Kia Forte, let's go to Elantra, 2015 Hyundai Elantra has a retail of twenty one seven and an invoice of 20700 So I would tell you that you're not going to be getting a huge discount on this car other than whatever the rebate is because the car is only marked up about $1,000. That's one of the things that people are seeing when they're, uh, when they're looking at new cars other than very expensive new cars that the small to medium price cars don't have a big markup anymore. So don't be surprised that when you walk into a dealership, you're going to see what they call a dealer markup. And I've got one of the examples in my hands right now. I'm not, I, I folded over the dealership, so you're not going to know which dealer it was. But what they did on their car, it says a limited availability, uh, $799 to mark the car up to 22709 So what this dealer did, and it's a Pensacola dealer, it's a new car dealership, I happen to to get one of their cars in trade, and I looked in the glove box, and I saw the original window sticker was in there, and then they had what we call in the car business, they had an addendum sticker on there, and the addendum sticker said that it, because this car was a limited availability car, that they just jacked the price up another $800. Now, why would the dealer do that? It's not like he's going to get, uh, it's not like he's going to expect you to pay that, but the realer, the, 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 well, maybe, maybe he does, if you're, if you're stupid enough to, to pay that, maybe he does expect you to pay that, but the reason the dealer does that is because they want to offer you a discount because that's what you're used to. If you walk into the dealership and you look at the car, and let's say the car's got a window sticker of $20,000, and you want uh, and you say, hey, I'll give you eighteen five dollars for the car. Well, if the car's only marked up $1,000, there's no way you're going to get a $1,500 discount. So the way the dealer does that is they jack up the price of the car. Now, normally they're not as bold as saying limited availability. Normally it's an addendum sticker that has an add-on uh, for things that you're purchasing, that you're forced to purchase with that car. And normally that would, uh, would be things like the rust proofing, uh, the fabric treatment either or leather treatment, the gloss treatment, the undercoating, uh, maybe a pinstripe. Uh, it could be uh, other products like a luggage rack or aftermarket wheels. And of course, the price of those things are highly exaggerated. A pinstripe, for example, I think when I add a pinstripe, my striper comes on Wednesday to stripe our cars, and um, uh, it costs me, I think, 12 to $15 to stripe a car, and they put on their $129. Now, the reason they jack the price up is so they can give you a discount on the car because then you feel better. One of the things that you're going to 
find that Frontier Motors is I don't really like playing those games. Uh, we're not a one price selling dealership, but we're about as close as you can get, which means that I've got my asking price and then I have my discounted price. Sometimes when I put the car on the internet because it goes to the World Wide Web, I have to be very, very careful that when I price my cars, my cars, I don't price them in retail because I'll never get a call. So I price them at a discounted price already, so there's not a lot of negotiating room. But the nice thing at Frontier Motors is that we have myself and four other managers there, and within seconds, I can give you the bottom line of a price uh, on, on any of our cars. So if you pick out a car, let's say you pick out a Lexus that we have on the lot, and let's say the NADA retail is $27,000, the salesman or you as a customer will come in and say, what's the best you can do on this car? No, none of this back and forth stuff. And I'll take a look at my cost, which I always have my cost guide on me, and I'll put a moderate to minor profit on there, and I'll tell you I can sell you the car for this dollar amount plus the taxes. Let me, by the way, put that in writing, and let me add the taxes and the dock fee and all the garbage fees on there so that if you go to the Lexus dealership in Mobile and you compare it to a similar car, that you'll know that we had the lower price. And the other thing I do when I do this pricing for our customers, I get into the program that I have. It's called uh, a dealer track price driver. And what the price driver does, it tells me what similar cars are being priced for within 150 miles. Now, if it's a specialty car, I can go nationwide if I want. I can go within 500 miles. Most people will travel uh, between 250 and 500 miles to buy a car. So I'll go 500 miles to see what they're priced at. And then I can show you, and I had this happen on Saturday with a Toyota Tacoma because a customer said that my price was too high, which of course is a normal reaction when I give a customer a price. If they don't know us, if they're a repeat customer of Frontier Motors, they know uh, that they'll trust us and to, to know that I'm going to give them a good deal right off the bat. But if there's a new customer who's never done business with, with us before, of course, uh, the first thing they're going to say is the, the normal reaction is it's too high. So what I did is I printed out all of the Toyota Tacomas within 300 miles, and I went back and I said, this is what's available. We have the least expensive Toyota Tacoma within 300 miles. So you can't be telling me my price is too high just because you want to do, uh, uh, negotiate. I'm making a profit, but I'm making a very small profit, and therefore, that's the best I can do. Well, guess what? They bought the car. Only because I showed them what's available, and I showed them which dealers even had them. Um, and none of the dealers had one that was a better deal. Now, there was a couple of them there that were less expensive, but mine was a four-wheel drive. They were looking at it, and they had a two-wheel drive. Or if mine's an automatic and theirs is a stick shift, there's other things that customers look at other than just the price. New body style, 2013, with 15,000 miles on, is just about $60,000. It's 59000 plus an addendum. So almost $60,000. The car is a year and a half old, has 15,000 miles on, and it's about $45,000. So we're talking about a $15,000 depreciation even on a Lexus, which normally traditionally has a better percentage of resale value than some of the other cars out there. And we have a C-Max hybrid. If you don't know what that is, that's a Ford. It's almost like a station wagon. Uh, it's a hybrid car. It gets 40 miles a gallon. The window sticker on it is $30,000. I have one with uh, 17,000 miles on it that we can sell for just about ten. dollars thousand dollars less than with the window stickers and i think folks you're getting the drift of what i'm talking about that if you have decided that you're going to buy a new car and you're going to go new car shopping why not stop in the 230 beverly parkway at frontier motors and get an idea of how much you can save on buying a car that might be uh, one or two years old and i'm looking at my screen right now just some of the examples that we have in stock right now is a 2014 camry hybrid with 600 miles on it a Chevy Sonic with 700 miles on a RAV4 with 900 miles on a 15 Hyundai Tucson. It's a 2015 Tucson used with 900 miles on it. We have a 13 Nissan NV200, which is a Nissan cargo van. It's got 1,400 miles on it. A Chevy Malibu with 1,900 miles on it. A new Beetle Turbo with 1,900 miles on it. A Dodge Avenger with 2,000 miles on it. A Honda Insight, uh, 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 which is a hybrid with uh, 3,000 miles on it, uh, an Equinox with 3,000 miles on it, a Traverse with 3,000 miles I can go on and on. i got pages and pages of cars that we have on a lot that have less than 10,000 miles on that are, of course, under, still for under factory warranty. And customers always ask, well, how does it work on a used car with a warranty? Well, if the car has a three-year warranty and it's six months old, you still have 30 months remaining on the warranty. And if it's a Chevrolet product, for example, if it's got 3,000 miles on it, the warranty goes up to 36,000 miles or 36 months from when the original purchaser took delivery of the car, and the history report will tell us when the first uh, title was issued. They also have some of the cars have a longer warranty, like Hyundai and Kia have a five-year, 60,000-mile warranty. 
So if you're buying a 2014 that's one year old, you still have four years of full factory warranty on that vehicle, up to 60,000 miles. I love selling the Hyundai and the Kias because if you keep the car for four to five years, almost for a whole duration of your ownership of that car, the car is going to be under factory warranty. So you don't really have to put worry about putting anything into the car other than uh, change the oil and uh, maybe put a set of tires on it uh, in 60,000 miles. So it's really a good deal to buy a Hyundai. And I still can't figure out why Honda and Toyota, which supposedly uh, always boasts that they're the best, most reliable vehicles on the planet, why they don't have a five-year, 60,000-mile warranty. If they're such good cars, why don't they back them a little bit better? And uh, and I don't know the answer to that. I have uh, uh, I was going to call the manufacturer, but I think they'd probably hang up on me. Um, uh, also, in Consumers Reports, there's an article in there that says, where the heck is my spare tire? Folks, if you're going to buy a new car, check for the spare tire. Spare tires are an option these days. <laughs> People don't know that. There was an article in here about a customer that, um, well, here it says, Bob Kronberg of California Shores drove his new Kia Optima home from the dealership. He got an unpleasant surprise. Instead of finding a spare tire in the trunk, he saw a tire inflator kick, a kit with a small air compressor and a can of sealant in case of a flat. <laughs> he, called, he called Kia. And they said that, uh, Kia said that that was an option of $250. And what he was mad about, he was mad about the sales rep because the sales rep didn't tell him. Well, why would the sales rep tell him? By the way, this car doesn't have a spare tire. Because the next thing you're going to ask is, well, I want a spare tire. And uh, then he'd have to uh, he'd, he'd have to throw a, sp- a spare tire in. So kind of weird that cars these days um, have uh, a, a spare tires as an option. I know that I sold Luke McCoy. uh that used to be, uh, if you remember Luke on the radio station? Yeah, I do remember him. You remember Luke? He worked here for quite a while, didn't he, Don, before he retired? Yes, yes. He was here, uh, well, we worked together 16 years. I think he was here a total of 17. 17 years. So we sold uh, Luke one of the first new body style CTSs. Absolutely gorgeous car. 2008 car. I think it had like 5,000 miles on. He came to the dealership, and he bought plenty of cars from us. He still does. When he buys a car, he moved out of state, but when he buys a car, he still comes and makes a road trip and, uh, and stops at Frontier Motors to buy his car from us, which is really a feather in our cap. We've worked out a good relationship. Don himself has bought six cars from Frontier Motors. Has it been six or five, Don? Uh, six. Six cars from Frontier Motors. And he doesn't get them for free. He actually has to pay for them. But he's willing to accept them for free. If he... <laughs> he is? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> so um, I forgot what I was talking about. We are talking about Luke McCoy with a spare tire. So mm-hmm. we came back a couple days later. Where the heck's my spare? You know, and we thought, uh, I called my uh, buyer up because he bought it at the auction. He says, man, somebody stole the spare tire out of this car. I can't believe you're giving me a $30,000 car without a spare tire. Well, guess what, folks? The, 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 the spare tire was an option. That car never, we called Cadillac at the buy, to buy one. He said, well, you know, what, how do you get one? They said, well, that car has a spare tire as an option. And, uh, of course, Luke was all ticked off. Well, guess what I did for him uh, for his birthday? I bought him a spare tire and a wheel. Nice. Because he's, he's one of the old guys, you know. Sure. Got and he don't want no small, small tire. You don't want that inflator thing. <laughs> he, got, he wants the real one. You know, I says, Luke, I says, it's going to take up the whole trunk. Well, guess what? He didn't care. It took up the whole trunk. Mm-hmm. Folks, if you're buying a used car or you have a used car, there are some things about warranties I wanted to mention. I, this is kind of an interesting thing called a road report from Consumers Reports. And uh, there are some secret warranties that I didn't know about until I read this. And some of this has happened to me. And they say that if you have a Honda Civic uh, from 2006 to 2008, plus some early 2009 models, they may develop a crack in the engine block that leaks coolant. The repair calls for a new engine block. But if overheating from coolant loss has occurred, that often means replacing the whole motor. Well, warranty, uh, they've, they've extended the warranty on these vehicles to 10 years. So if you've got one of these Civics and you've got an engine block problem, call Honda. Don't just take it to your garage and uh, have them put a new motor in it. Same thing with uh, GM. Uh, they, they got a fuel level problem. Um, midsize, and I didn't know this because I've had this problem in some of our cars. 2005 and two, the, the 2007 SUVs have a faulty fuel sensor that may cause a fuel gauge to give an inaccurate reading. And uh, GM will replace the fuel level sensors for free up to 10 years, 120,000 miles. This is one of your affected cars. So that's very expensive because they have to drop the gas tank. It's about five to $600 to fix that. So, And they also say on there that if you if you've paid for the repair, they might reimburse you. So if you have proof that you've done this, call General Motors hotline and see if they'll give you your money back. They got some rear suspension problems on some Ultimas and Maximas, 2000, 2005 models. They're going to be you got a suspension problem on them. Call Nissan to see if they'll be fixed for free. Chrysler's got some fuel tank issues from 2007 and 8. Uh, Jeep Liberties and Dodge Nitros. So if you got a problem with your uh, fuel tank on those vehicles, uh, Chrysler's willing to kick in some money and fix that for free. Um, 
the, the Hemis have some problem. The older Hemis, uh, 2009, 2012, have some issues. Honda Civic has some paint problems on their 2006 Civic to 2011. If your Civic is the paint's cracking off of it or is chalking off the car, um, they are going to extend the warranty instead of one year uh, to seven years. So if you've got a Civic out there and it's relatively new, 2006 or newer, and the paint is bad on that car, Honda is willing to give you some kicking money to make sure that uh, you're going to be taken care of. I, I, I get ticked off at these manufacturers because there's some things where they just have a bad supplier and, and, and everybody knows that and sees on the, on the, um, uh, the infomercials these headlights, how bad they fade, and you can buy this headlight kit. The, the manufacturer, as far as I'm concerned, concerned, should replace all these headlights at no charge. You shouldn't have to buy a kit to wax your headlights because they used a, uh, a inadequate supplier. And that happens every once in a while. And that's happening on Lexus dashboards and some Toyota dashboards where they gum up and you put your hand on it, you can see your handprint. And Lexus, it wants $1,600 to replace the dashboard. And if you've got one of these cars, folks, you might want to call Lexus because the last time I called, at least they split it with us, um, which still cost eight, nine hundred to $900 for dashboard. We give free advice. You'll notice I'm going off track talking about the car business because that's what we do all day long. We don't just sell cars. People actually buy cars from us. And, folks, there's a difference. There's a big difference between being sold a car and a customer coming by a car. And I always tell my salespeople, if a customer says, well, you sold me a car, tell them, no, you didn't. You bought that car from us because we don't force you to do anything. We don't force you to make a decision. And I think the term of the salesperson, when they sell you something, is having a customer make a decision when they're not ready. We don't want you to make a decision if you're not ready. If you want to shop around, what we're going to do at Frontier Motors is give you a price and say, go shop around. Come on back when you're ready. Come on back and buy the car when you're ready. The only time we have upset customers when they come back and they say, I'm ready, and the car has been sold, and then i got to start over. We buy about 50 to 60 cars a week. That's a big rotation, so a lot of times the car will not be there when you come back. But what's my job to do is to get you another car like that. But we're going to sell you a car when, when you're, there I go talking about selling cars, we're going to let you buy a car when you're ready, and we're not going to sell you a car. We're not going to sell you anything. We really pride ourselves in being a laid-back dealership, and if anything, uh, we, we, we're too laid-back where the customer says, well, if you would have uh, asked me to buy, maybe I would have. Well, of course we want you to buy the car, but we don't want you to feel pressured that you're making a decision when you're not ready. Free car faxes, uh, free uh, auto checks, free appraisals, free advice. Everything is free except the car. You've got to pay for the car. Don, just remember that. You've got to pay for the car. That's yes, I'm well aware of that. Yeah, free water. We don't have sales at Frontier Motors. Every day is a sale at Frontier Motors. We'll give you a price right off the bat in writing. We'll do whatever we can to help you buy a car somewhere else. We'll tell you if that car is a good deal or not. If you need a diminished value, stop in. If your car gets smashed up, stop in. I'll make sure that you get compensated properly by the insurance company. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Help you those days. You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay, come in today. Doing business the old fashioned way. Frontier, we got the right price, Frontier. We'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead. Friend.